with a little activity. This is the Monty Hall problem. Some of you may have heard of the Monty Hall problem. It's about a game show where if you make it to the final, they give you a choice of three doors. Behind the three doors are three different prizes. You get to take one of those prizes home. The idea is behind one door is an amazing prize. Usually it's a brand new car. And behind the other doors are prizes that aren't as good. And often it's a goat. So you make it to the final. You can win a brand new sports car, really expensive, or take home a goat. Okay? Maybe. So really the strategy should go up to the doors, listen, and then pick your doors. But no, you don't have that option. So what happens is you pick a door. So right now I'm going to write down on a piece of paper so you know that I'm not cheating. Let's use a pen that works. Okay. I picked one of those numbers. And now you get to pick. You're, you're, you've made it to the final. What, which door are you going to pick? So she picks door number three. Now the way that the puzzle works is then I go say, I open up door number one and say, good thing you didn't pick door number one. There was a goat behind door number one. And now you have a choice. Do you want to stay with door three or do you want to switch? Does it matter or is one of them a better thing to do than the other? Okay, so do you want to stay with your door three? Or do you want to switch? You'll stay. The brand new car was behind door number two. Should have switched. But you get a brand new goat. Really nice. There might be bylaws about having it in your room. But so brand new. Brand new goat. Yeah. No, just recently cloned. Um, so. The question is, does it matter to switch or stay or not? Is it a 50-50 once you're in the end? Or does it actually, would it make a difference to switch or to stay? So that's the mathematical question I want you to think about. I'm not going to give you an answer right now. You have to come up with a, it doesn't matter or it does matter. And if it does matter, what are your chances of winning if you stay? What are your chances of winning if you switch? So either the answer is it doesn't matter, so it's 50-50, switch or stay. Or if it does matter, figure out the numbers that are involved with that. Before we get to that, we're going to look at some more at compound events. Compound events are what we've been dealing with when one thing happens after another. And we'll probably have time to get this one example done. So there's three boxes. You have white, black, and red marbles. The number is indicated in the table below. I love these probability questions. There's like, are there actually groups of people that go around with boxes of marbles and pick them out and are curious about what happens? But it's like the best way to get us used to these kind of questions, even though they're not very realistic. The interesting thing about the old grade 12 pre-calculus textbook is they would often be picking marbles out of urns. That would be how, and it's like, what kind of kids go like, oh, let's put marbles in here and mix them up and pull them out. I don't know, are, are there other uses of urns other than ashes? Maybe. I don't know. It just seemed like a very odd use of terminology in math questions. Maybe it's a traditional probability thing.
So a box is chosen at random and then a marble is selected. How do we draw a tree diagram to represent this? And then we're going to find the probability that the marble selected is red. So with the tree diagram, you have branches that show your first thing that you're going to do. I'm going to choose a box. One out of three, one out of three, one out of three, since they're all chosen at random. We can put that probability right on the branch. And then we're going to either get a white, blue, or red marble. Those probabilities written in green, I'll scroll down a little bit, change depending on which box you chose. If you chose box one, well, there was eight white, two black, and six red. Once you've got your tree diagram, you can see that there's three different cases or three different situations where you could get a red marble. You could have either chosen box one and got a red marble, chosen box two and got a red marble, or chosen box three and got a red marble. So then our probability is adding up those three cases. If you want to write out the notation, it's box one in red, box two in red, box three in red. But you wouldn't need to, on a test, write that out. You could just, from your T diagram, write out the probabilities. Now, since it's one event happening after another, these will be independent events. Picking box one doesn't affect the chances of getting a red out of that box. And so we can just multiply the probabilities along the branches, add them up, and get our final probability. Does everybody know how to use the um, fraction button on their calculator? We change a decimal back to a fraction. Oh, that's really nice. So let's say, let's say I'm doing this on my calculator. I've got one third times by, what was it, six, oh, I should remember, six out of 16, plus, write them all out, one third times three twelfths, plus, oops, One third times three twelfths plus one third times three twelfths again. So I've typed in all of my fractions into my calculator. I've added them all up and I get the 0.292. Once you get that decimal, your calculator, if you hit the math button, the very first one says, Would you like to change that back to a fraction? You push enter, it changes it back to a fraction and a fraction in lowest terms which is really nice. This also is a handy tool if you want to reduce a fraction, like 312 divided by 792. Is that in lowest terms? No. But if you push enter and then go math fraction, you get, what does it look like? Thirteen out of thirty-three? Yes. So that is a handy button to have on your calculator. So we'll end there. I'll get you to you can work on example two right now before the bell rings.